everyone welcome to my biology classes this will be the last part of chapter 1 class 11 the living world okay so let's start so let's start with the topic called systematics it is nothing but the study it's a study of the diversification of organism which were there in the past and which were there in the present okay and their interrelationship okay so what's the definition is saying it is the study it's the study of diversification of living forms okay which were there in the past and which is there in the present and their relationship among living things throughout time okay understanding the definition and it was first used by carolus linnaeus so carolus linnaeus last class i already discussed about carolus linnaeus he was known as the father of taxonomy okay so understood what is systematics okay moving on to the next slide we'll just see what were the two books written by carolus linnaeus the first book was the Systema Natura this was the book which was written by Carolus Linnaeus okay and the next book is Species Plantarium okay this was also written by Carolus Linnaeus here he listed uh, various species of plants known at that particular time this was the book okay Systema Natura is one of the book and Species Plantarium is one of the book okay written by Carolus Linnaeus understanding so moving on to the next slide so now comes nomenclatures this nomenclatures was given by Carolus Linnaeus only okay now what is nomenclatures nomenclatures is giving names to a particular organism be it plant or animals okay so giving scientific name to a particular organism is called nomenclatures so we'll go in details in the next slide okay so here is the definition of nomenclatures nomenclatures is the rendering means giving scientific name to a particular organism okay the process it is the process of rendering scientific name to a particular organism is called nomenclatures all right and the second point is saying icpn and iczn these two are the bodies which are appointed to give scientific name to plants and animals respectively all right so this two are the bodies who will give the scientific name this will i c b n will give the scientific name for plants and i c z n will give the scientific name for the animals clear so now we'll see the full form of what is i c b n and what is i c z n so i c b n is international code code of botanical nomenclatures okay this uh, full form are very important from examination perspective then the next is international code <coughs> code for zoological nomenclatures okay clear so moving on to the next slide now can you see this name this is a scientific name for mango okay mangifera indica so two segments you can see in a particular uh, scientific name okay this one will be your generic name okay and this one will be your specific epithet okay this will be the your genes genus sorry genus and this will be the species name okay so it is divided into two different segment like a name and a title okay this is also called a uh, genus generic name and here species or specific epithet okay and sometimes you can see like this mangifera indica lin so what do you mean by lin lin is the name of the scientist that is carolus linnaeus means he contributed in the in the uh, in the naming of this mango mangifera indica okay he was the first one 
that's why his name his title was written here okay understanding so next slide we'll see more in details the theory part of binomial nomenclatures so here it is saying that the scientific name is written in two segments one is that is generic name which i have already told you and one is your specific epithet two names okay the first one will be your generic name or genus or the next one will be the last one will be specific epithet or species name all right okay the arrangement of this arrangement of providing name with two component uh, components are called binomial nomenclatures which was given by carolus linnaeus okay by means two nomial means name nomenclatures means to give name huh the understood what is binomial nomenclatures which was given by carolus linnaeus so last slide we have seen one example for mango that is mangifera indica now here we'll see one different example that is that is homo sapiens this is the scientific name of human beings okay so here homo means what generic name okay and sapiens means specific epithet okay clear now moving on to the next slide there are some rules which you have to follow while you write the um, scientific name okay so we will see one by one the rules each name has two words that we know we have already discussed that the first name will be genus or generic name and the second the last word will be specific epithet or the species name okay this is the first point the second one when expressed should be independently underlined so it should be underlined when written manually and should be in italics when printed okay when we write the scientific name then we have to underline it and when we type it so it should be in italics okay like when we are writing like homo sapiens i am writing homo sapiens so i have to underline the scientific name understood and when when i type it then it should be edited to italic format okay now next is name should be latinized or a latin word the name should be latin or like homo sapiens is a latin word mangifera indica is latin word okay understanding now the next one the generic name begins with upper case the generic name that means the first name the generic name the, this one should be initiated with the what capital letter that is upper case and the second name that is specific epithet should be begin with the lower case so this the second name the species name should be started with a small letter okay this one should be small letter and this one should be capital letters okay understanding the rule for nomenclatures which we have to follow okay okay now moving on to the next slide now trinomial nomenclatures and autonym what is trinomial tri means 3 like how we have seen binomial nomenclatures there were two parts two segments but here you can see three segments okay so trinomial nomenclatures means naming organism with genus followed by species and followed by subspecies so there uh, in binomial nomenclatures first we we have seen what genus then we have seen species okay here we will see genus species and subspecies this is the extra one which we we will see okay okay now what do we mean by autonym autonym refers to when a specific epithet is repeated okay like this one corvus splendens splendens the specific epithet is repeated two times okay this is the scientific name of a crow okay so this is the term used autonym autonym okay 
when the specific epithet is repeated in trinomial nomenclatures. Okay. Understanding? Now moving on to the next slide. Now, herbarium. What do you mean by herbarium? So you have done this activity many a time. You can see this diagram. You have done this activity in class 6 or 7 in your school days. Okay. So herbarium, when you take a flower or a leaf and you uh, press it down a book, okay, that is called herbarium. And um, if you do it systematically, you just have to take a sheet of paper or a copy. You just have to paste the herbarium and like this. You can see here how it is written, herbarium entry. So you have to write the name properly, when it was collected and all that. Okay, so this is called herbarium. So let's see the definition of it. Herbarium is the collection. So we are collecting the particular spe uh, specimen. Okay, herbarium is a collection of preserved plant. So we are preserving that particular plant specimens that are dried. We have to dry it, press it and preserved on sheets. Okay, this is called herbarium. All right. So moving on to the next slide. So few facts we have to know for multiple choice questions. Acharya Jagjit Chandra Bose Indian Botanical Garden. Okay. Also known as Indian Botanical Garden or Calcutta Botanical Garden. Okay. Where it is located? It is located in Howrah, India. Okay. Now moving on to the next slide. So where is ISIR, oh sorry, sorry for that, CSIR National Botanical Research Institute located, it is located in Lucknow, India. Okay, National Botanical Research Institute is located in Lucknow, India. Okay. Now moving on to the next slide. So here we we, uh, we are watching here what taxonomical aid few taxonomical aids we will discuss herbarium we have already discussed zoological park you already know the zoos zoo just talking about zoo where you can see captive animals okay museum you know okay and botanical garden where live plants are planted okay now next slide we'll discuss about monographs and key okay this concept will be new to you okay these are some taxonomical aids okay so moving on to the next slide what is monograph okay this is a taxonomical aid which contain information on any one taxon information on only one particular taxon Okay, so what do you mean by taxon? Taxon is a unit of classification representing a rank of any level. It represents a rank of any level. Like suppose it is talking about one taxon means mammal suppose. Mammal. Okay, or uh, if we consider another that is amphibians we can consider reptiles also we can consider aves also etc etc okay so here we consider only one taxon one particular taxon okay so moving on to the next slide key what is key key is also a taxonomical aid where we can see that it is used for identification of plants and animals based on similarities and dissimilarities. Okay, so we can identify plants and animals based on the similar characteristics and dissimilar characteristics. Okay, understanding? Now moving on to the next slide. So what it is saying that each statement in the key is called lead. Okay, for example, I have given three pictures of bird. This one blue color bird, this one pinkish bird, this is yellow, yellow color bird. So, 
what uh, you can make a statement out of it that whether it is a bird or an animal whether it is having wing or it is not having wing whether the color is blue pink uh, whether the color is colorful or colorless whether it is having spots or does not have any spots so these are some contrasting statements which we can make okay the statement which i have made is this statements are called as lead okay and the contrasting characteristic gen uh, generally in pairs is called couplet okay these two are different terms this is the statement which i have said and the contrasting statement along which i have said is called your couplet understanding like for example i have said that um, they are birds okay and they are not animals okay they are colorful but they are not uh, they are colorless birds suppose two statement i am saying they are colorful but they are colorless bird so two statements i am giving this two are one led one led okay so this two are contrasting they are making a contrasting characteristics means they are colorful and they are colorless okay so this contrasting characteristics is called your couplet understanding okay thank you everyone for your patient hearing hope you are understanding ending uh, with this chapter so next video i will be making on multiple choice question i'll try to give as many as i can for your entrance exam perspective all right thank you for your patient hearing